Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Sanctuary. I am joined by another fantastic guest. You've already seen him in the wide receiver part two. He is back to talk through some tight ends for the third year in a row. It is, of course, Ali. As you all know him at FF Dynasty Grill. Ali, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, thanks, Rich. Thanks for, for having me back on to talk about yeah, tight ends for the, the third year in a row, it seems. Um, seems like yesterday we were talking about last year's tight end class and um, hopefully this year's class will um, will be a slightly a little bit better than than last year's. I'm I'm excited as a whole for this for this rookie class. Yeah, I think it's fascinating. I was I was looking through some ID, ADP, very different IDP, uh, through the the years, and it's it's a fascinating thing in terms of pre draft ADP on the tight ends, and it's basically we're terrible. We can identify the elite <laughs> guys and the you know the guys that are going to be first round picks, but. Looking back through the years, you know, uh, Brevin Jordan was was an early pick in ADP two years ago. I think we 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 both liked him pre-draft and he ended up disappointing. And and there's time and time again about these guys that get held up, whether it be you know Albert O or players like that, that we we fall in love with in the pre-draft process and then disappoint. So it'll be really interesting to see. There's a very clear top four in terms of rookie ADP at the moment. For me, only two of them deserve to be there. So it'll be really interesting to hit, pick your brain and hear your thoughts around who you think deserves to belong in this kind of potentially elite rookie tight end class, because I think it is going to be unparalleled in terms of the volume and the quality of players that are coming out. So we're, we're going to start at the top with arguably one of the most complete tight ends, whether it be, you know, in terms of his blocking ability, his route run ability, he can do it all. But perhaps there's a little bit of a question on that elite upside. Are you a, are you a Michael Mayer believer? Yeah, certainly am. I think there's too much to like to, to not be a believer in what Michael Mayer can do in, in terms of fantasy. Um, there's, t- there's two tight ends that I really feel can break into the top five or six in terms of dynasty within the next two years and Michael Mayer has got to be one of them I mean if you were to to build a prototypical perfect tight end who can do the lot as you mentioned the blocking and the receiving it would pretty much look like Michael Mayer the only pause for thought really is I think he's just unlucky in this class I mean he's still amazing the top two tight end in this class but He's just not as athletic as some of the freaks that are coming out in this class. So a lot of people mark him down for that. But it's just it's just incredible. And I think he's someone we know the tight end position that it can be tricky for for terms of fantasy in terms of getting a an immediate payback in, in your draft pick. But Michael Murray, I think, is someone that can can probably break that mold this year and really produce right out of the right out of the gate. Um, from game one it, it could be a slower process but he's someone if I'm going to bet on it'd be Michael Mayer to, to produce some figures from from game one um, he's, he's a great prospect he's playing almost 50-50 in terms of in line and in the slot um, yeah he just gets knocked down for that athleticism but that's literally the only concern I have for Michael Mayer he's his 40 time of 4.7 which which would be good in in most years it just looked average in this athletic class um, most athletic tight ends this year were running in the four fives, which was pretty insane, which is sort of wide receiver speed. Um, and that's the only concern. Will he be as successful in the NFL? I mean, he's producing some incredible numbers in terms of the college game. Is that going to translate to the NFL? Well, I think it will do. There's a really small percentage that I'm concerned about. He's just such a, such a clever player. His, his player IQ is just, it's just immense. He's, he reminds me, and he's not Travis Kelsey, but he just reminds me of Travis Kelsey, a guy that's not the fastest tight end in the NFL, but he's just incredibly clever and he's always getting open. His his routes are absolutely clean. His hands are amazing. Um, yeah, that, that, there's really not much concerns about Michael Mayer. It all comes down to his ADP in terms of these rookie drafts. And he's probably just going a little bit too high for me personally. Yeah, I think, look, you can see it on the screen there. That pretty much sums up perfectly. He's a 98th percentile pre-draft model, 99.3 percentile post-draft. Like, he ticks every box you could want other than maybe that elite athleticism. And I would argue that whilst he's not, 
you know, the uber athlete that some tight ends are, he's still a pretty good athlete. And I think that given his, as you said, the, the kind of football intelligence, the nuanced route running, I'm less concerned about him being, you know, lacking that elite athleticism in order to get by. I think he's a really good nuanced route runner. I think that he can get open at will without that kind of elite athleticism. And I don't see any questions about him translating. I think he's probably one of the safer prospects in this draft. You also add in the blocking, which for fantasy is irrelevant, but he is probably the only tight end that you can say he's going to be on the field close to 100% of the snaps. You know, there's some guys we're going to come on to talk about in a minute who are probably going to be 40, 50% snap share guys to start their rookie years. Michael May is not. He's probably going to, wherever he ends up, whoever drafts him, he's not going to have to leave the field because you're not losing anything in the run game when he's in there. Um, I really like him. I think he's got, you know, maybe not tight end one upside, but I think he's far more likely to be a, plug and play reliable you know mid tier tight end like 5 to 6 year in year out than a lot and and at the tight end position sometimes just having that guy that you can plug in your lineup and not worry about on a week to week basis is is a massive win because we know that it's is not exactly the most reliable position moving forward um diving across to somebody that's perhaps a little bit sexier a little bit more exciting Dalton Kincaid, a very different type of receiver, a very different body. Are you a Kincaid believer? I certainly am. Yeah, he's he's my tight end one of this this draft class. Um, but I have to say he's pretty much neck and neck with Michael Mayer in terms of a different type of tight end. I just can't split him. I had Michael Mayer coming in as my tight end one. Didn't think anybody would really get too close to him. But, but Dalton Kincaid is just... He's just so fun to watch, and his his first of the the athletic tight ends that we're going to talk about didn't actually start playing football till 2018, but his his rise is is pretty incredible. Um, he didn't unfortunately didn't attend the combine drills, which which is a shame for it would be nice to have seen him because I think he would have tested really well. Um, that that fracture in his back late in the season um, paved the way for that. Um, and then he didn't feel like he needed to do much testing either afterwards his pro day. So. He still feel like he's the best tight end in this class. I'm I'm not really going to argue with him because at, at 6'4", 246 pounds, when when I see him moving like a wide receiver down the field, he's he's just so deceptively fast. You you watch the play unfold, and you see down the middle who's getting the ball. It's, it's Dalton Kincaid, and he's 25, 30 yards down the field, and you think, how on earth did he get there so fast? The, the vertical speed is 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 incredible. You just look at the stats: the college dominated 94th percentile. Um, the, the yards per route run, 86th percentile, breakout age, yeah, 81st percentile. It was that third season he really broke out with with 890 yards and eight eight touchdowns. And for me, the most exciting part of Dalton Kincaid is this. It's it's when he was targeted. So quarterback rating when targeted, 115.4, which is a great metric. And then in pass protection, you mentioned it with um, with Michael Mayer. He gave up zero sacks and zero pressures. So he's a guy that can that can still block really well. And because of that, he's going to see the field more often than not. And when with that, he gets more chance for, for catches and, and better upside for fantasy. Yeah, I, I really like Kincaid. I think, you know, shock that the former basketball player is is, is a really decent tight end. You know, we've seen it time and time again. But I think that there is a lot to like. I think he is an incredibly natural route runner and receiver. And I think that, as you said, you know, you, you watch, you plug on the tape and you see him time and time again, you know, outrunning linebackers, getting open down the seam, finding the soft spots in those zones. And and he's going to be a quarterback's best friend. The slight knock is that I think he is almost only a, an F type tight end. We're going to see him lined up in the slot an awful lot more than we're going to see him in line. I don't think he's quite, you know, Mike Gazicki can't can't line up in line and is only a, a basically a slot wide receiver but it's he's not far off that and i think that that's my only knock is that that could potentially get keep him off the field you know is he only going to be a 50 60 percent snap share guy at the beginning of his career until he's kind of truly established and get on the field more so yeah really like him great potential great body going to be useful in the in the red zone but 
I've got him a shade behind Michael Mayer just because I think I've got that one slight concern, whereas I think Michael Mayer is going to be on the field an awful lot more. Whilst you're here, guys, make sure you're giving us a like and subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button just below uh, and make sure you're you're aware of all the fantastic content we're going to have as the draft rolls around and, and we head into best ball season. We're going to have plenty more coming for you. So the Titan 3 in ADP, he is an absolute monster in terms of size, speed, athleticism. But he he basically didn't produce in college. Done in Washington. Are you, are you a believer? Are you a fan, Ali? I mean, you absolutely love watching the film on Washington because he's he's such a freak. He's probably the, the freakiest freak in this class at 6'7", 264 pounds. Um, the largest wingspan for a tight end in combine history. He is an absolute mammoth. Um, and he's going to be a problem when he when he enters the NFL, when it comes to, to mismatches. You just <laughs> watch him, he absolutely pancakes people for fun, which is which is great. And as a blocker in, in that terms, he's absolutely elite, which is why NFL teams are going to cover Dana Washington. And there is talks about first round buzz about Dana Washington could slip in the first round. And there is a few teams that can do with tight ends as well. So... If he was to go in the first round, unfortunately, I think he will be overdrafted because of that. And I just have concerns about his fantasy output. Um, I think he's a fantastic player. I just think he's going to be better for a fantasy team rather than a fantasy contributor. Um, we've just not seen the top end production from Dana Washington. And it might not be through any fault of his own because when he has been thrown the ball with some spectacular catches, he does everything that he's been asked for. It's just that he's got a certain other tight end on his team in, in Brock Bowers that could be, he's an amazing prospect. Um, so it's, it's no wonder why he gets the ball more often um, and he's only in, in two tight end sets. Um, so yeah, I think he's going to be amazing for an NFL team in terms of a blocking tight end. I think he's going to be a red zone weapon. So, I mean, he's going to be a bit touchdown dependent. He could be obviously be useful for your fantasy teams, but he's not someone that I'm going to want to rely on as a, as a guy to plug in and play every single week and perhaps better in a, in a best ball setting. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm a bit concerned about him being drafted too high or well, higher in the NFL. So maybe first round, early second round. And with that, he's just going to be drafted in terms of the rookie drafts, just slightly ahead of where I want to take him. Yeah. I think for me, this is a really good NFL prospect, not a good fantasy prospect. You know, you can see on the screen there, he never broke out. He never even hit a 10% domino rating. Yes, okay, he was lining up opposite perhaps the best tight end prospect ever in terms of Brock Bowers. And every time you try and watch, I don't know if you were the same, but every time I try and watch anything about Dono Washington, I just find myself drooling over Brock Bowers and, and forgetting <laughs> that I'm there to try and watch Dono Washington. Um, look, I, I just don't believe that he's ever going to be able to command enough volume as a receiver to be fantasy relevant week in, week out. I think, yeah, there'll probably be some boom weeks because of his size, he'll be a decent red zone weapon. But I just can't see that week in, week out reliability for me to want to spend any sort of draft capital on him. So I'm quite happy to just let wherever he ends up going, other people draft him. Because I do think, as you said, if he gets early day two draft capital, even day one draft capital, he's going to get overdrafted for fantasy. And, and this is the perfect example of what we said earlier about, I think a lot of, we, we, we kind of don't really know in the pre-draft process how to evaluate tight ends. And I think for me, Donald Washington is, is a, a massive red flag and not somebody that I'm going to be comfortable drafting because, you know, you, you plug on the tape and, and you look at him and, yeah, okay, he, he's massive. He is a freak athlete in terms of the size-speed combination, but he's got very little wiggle and very little ability to kind of throttle down and run routes. He, you know, he, he can run down the seam. He can run on what I'd call kind of 45-degree angle routes, so whether it be slants or posts, where he can use his body to kind of create separation. But he can't naturally create separation, but because of the size he is, he can't throttle down. He can't change direction. Yeah, it is once he gets going, that's where he's going kind of thing. So for me, I'm I'm not a believer that Dono Washington is going to be a fantasy star. And I'm quite happy letting other people take, take the risk and draft him. And, you know, if he does turn out to be the next superstar, then 
I'm going to have an awful lot of egg on my face, but I'm I'm happy for others to take the risk because I don't believe somebody that produced as little as he did in college is going to come in and be a reliable fancy option in the NFL. So, yeah, I mean, so gone. I'm hoping that he goes first round and it just helps me helps him fall to somebody else that wants to overdraft him. And, and as you mentioned, you can just, you can just leave him off your teams. Yeah, absolutely. And talking about freak athletes, we've got another one here, Luke Musgrave, an absolute freak of an athlete. You saw four, six, one forty broad jump over 10 foot vert of 36. Like, are you, are you a, a Musgrave believer that, that he can translate the athleticism into elite fancy production? Or or do you are you concerned that the lack of production in college will continue to the NFL? Yes, yeah, so I think he's got the ability if he lands on the right team. He's my tight end three, so I've got him ahead of Donna Washington, who is my tight end four. Um, and this is the guy that I'm actually targeting in my, my rookie draft. So if teams want to over overpay on, on Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid or Donna Washington. I'm hoping that this is my guy that's going to fall to the third round and the ADP seems to line up absolutely fine for that. So this is the guy that I'm targeting. Um, and he's just my favourite tight end to watch in this class. We've got got the freak of Donna Washington, who's who's fine to watch in, in spates, but um, Luke Musgrave is just unbelievable to watch. Um, yeah, I like the fact that his hometown is called Bend because he's got some really oily hips this guy can absolutely bend at that size it's it's pretty incredible a guy that that size should not be this athletic um but yeah it's just a shame that we didn't get to see much of him this past year in 2022 went down to that knee injury early on um, and, and just never recovered from it but it's really encouraging from just them two games as you can see the 15 targets them two games alone just shows how much the offense was looking to him and he could absolutely pull it off and, and help that team. So it was a shame to, to not see more of it. Um, we only really saw it in 2021 was the only season that he managed to stay healthy or it wasn't affected by COVID. Um, and the offense, he clearly wasn't in person. I don't think it played to his strengths. I think he is a bit more scheme dependent than some of these other tight ends, but I think he's got that upside where if he lands on the team, it's going to utilize his skill set. I do see sort of, Top eight, top nine, dynasty tight end in the realms of possibility for, for Luke Musgrave. I think he does everything right. His route running is is pretty crisp. I think he's great in contested catches. Um, he creates good yardage after the catch. Um, he, he doesn't just fall down like some of the, the tight ends and bigger prospects. Um, he, he seems to separate fine. He comes from an NFL bloodline. His, his father and, N and uncle were, were quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, I think he's, a day, he's an NFL-ready prospect i'm hoping that he gets day two draft capital um it's just a shame i think he's got so many good traits to his game but we've just not seen it put it all together for for his career and, and for fantasy so there's a lot of traits there luckily the nfl covers traits especially ones with with such upside that musgrave possesses so i'm just hoping he gets that day two draft capital um and yeah he's someone that i'm definitely targeting in in the third round of, of rookie drafts yeah, I mean, I I can see it more with Musgrave than I can with Washington. I you know I I think he is a a good athlete. I, as you said, I see that natural route running ability. I think he's got good hands. I don't think he's got elite hands, but at least you see him kind of go out and catch the ball with his hands rather than body and catching. I think there's more about him than Washington, but I'm still so confirmed concerned. As you can see, no breakout age. Didn't even hit a seven and a half percent dominator. The production was never there in college, and that that has me concerned. I think he's also gets lazy at times. I think in terms of in and out of his cuts, there's times where you're like, you're such a good athlete and such a good mover that you should be wide open off this cut, and he's just sort of lazy, almost telegraphs where he's going to defenders before he goes. And I think that's the same as a blocker as well. I think he's lazy in the run game. Basically, the only time he ever looked good in the blocking game was whenever it was any sort of trap and he was having to go across the offense and sort of seal off a backside end. He looked good doing that, but unfortunately in the NFL, you, you, you're going to have to make one-on-one -on -one blocks. You can't just, you know, make a living of, of kind of trap blocks. So I'm concerned. I'm quite a bit lower than kind of consensus on him and Washington. You know, Musgrave's my six, Washington's my seven. And I'm 
I'm probably going to be quite happy letting other people draft them um, and, and, and try and target some higher upside guys with perhaps a bit better production through college. Um, talking of best of the rest, we've got three guys up here. So we've got Zach Kuntz, uh, Tucker Craft and Sam Laporta. Now, I would take all three of these guys over the last two guys we've just spoken about in terms of Washington and Musgrave. Is there any one of these three that you particularly like that that kind of stands out to you? I think Sam Laporta is someone that's getting a lot of buzz lately um, from from the combine. He, again, a bit like Greg Dolchich last year, is a converted wide receiver. Um, he really produced pretty decent numbers in a, in a really bad college program. So. He was their leading receiver this year, almost double the next wide receiver in terms of yardage. Um, the team's a total three, seven touchdowns this season. Um, so, yeah, it just shows you how bad the offense was. But a guy that I, I can see having really good um, NFL draft capital. Um, he's got some really nice traits to his game. Um, you like the fact that the targets and receptions increased every single season. And he reminds me a bit of, of George Kittle when he's got the ball in his hands. He's, he's great at just smashing defenders out of the way so I think obviously he was really athletic around the third best um third fastest 40 time he's a bit messy but I think NFL teams can can clean that up so Sam Laporta I'm absolutely willing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to to draft him as our as our tight end one I think he's possibly going to be a great tight end so he's someone that I I do like to target so in the fourth round he's he seems to be going and he's got plenty of upside yeah, I love Laporta. He's my tight end three. I think he's, you know, that that Iowa offense, it, it can't be said enough, was absolutely horrific last year. And and he was like the one bright spot. So if anyone was able to shine in that offense, it's, you know, it's impressive. Tucker Craft, I really like. I think he's a, a good enough athlete. I think he's a nuanced route runner. And, you know, he you just got to look, 99th percentile receiving yards per team pass attempts enough said you know he, he was basically the team's offense and then Zach Kuntz you know you look at things in terms of stuff that translates to fantasy success it's athleticism production in college and you know really production really productive in his time at Old Dominion obviously originally a Penn State recruit and then arguably one of the most athletic tight ends we have ever seen at the combine in terms of I think I think he was a, a 9.99 or a 10 on, on the RAS scale, you know, 4, 5, 40, yeah. 40 inch for 6, 8, 7, 3 cone, which is good. You know, that's a good time for most DBs. This guy's running it at 255 pounds. And then a, a 4, 1, 2 short shuttle just, just for, you know, good effect. He is a mind blowing athlete. And I think he could be somebody that that is a steal in in kind of dicey circles and it's it's not just that people are going to be drafting him because of his name i think he he's got some play to uh to go with it as such so yeah, i mean as a whole the the three of these are, are exciting guys you can take late on or sometimes they'll go undrafted and there's just so much more upside in this this rookie class than i see in in last year's yeah, so we'll, we'll run through my kind of rankings and then we'll, we'll touch on yours, Alex, as you can see on the screen there. So I've got Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid. For me, they're very much a very close one and two. I'm happy taking them. I think they're going to be really good, reliable, potentially elite tight end options for, for many years to come. You've then got the, the kind of high upside tier of Sam Laporta and Tucker Craft. Really impressive production in terms of team-based production from both of them in college. And then you've You've got, I call them the athletic three in, in Zach Kuntz, Luke Musgrave and Dana Washington are, are kind of my third tier. I think obviously Kuntz has, has got a, a better production profile than the other two, but they could all be highly drafted because of that, you know, the traits that you spoke about earlier. How how have you got them ranked? Is, does it look similar to that or are you, uh, are you a bit higher on other guys? Yeah, it's pretty similar. It's just... Um... The, the tiers are pretty similar. The top two, I think, uh, are quite far away from from the rest of them. Then you're just taking you're taking shots on guys with upside. So Luke Musgrave is my tight end three. Um, it's a pretty big tier in my, my second tier. Um, Donna Washington is is four, but he could easily slip down the ranking slightly. Um, and then Sam Laporta at five, and and Kraft and and Kuntz, um, just just below. But my second tier is a pretty large tier. So um, draft capital will will play a lot in. 
Um, and then also Landon Spot as well, I think is more, Titans are more dependent on Landon Spot in terms of the scheme of which they're going to be utilised um, and whether there's a clear path to the to the tight end one on, on that roster. Yeah, I think that's a valid point and certainly something that, you know, we take into account more at tight end than, than pretty much any other position because I think that landing spot really does play a big effect. Um, before before we go, Ali, remind everybody watching, remind everyone listening, where, where can they find you? Where can they find your work? Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at FF Dynasty Grill. Um, my co-host, the, the Fantasy Wildcard um, Dynasty Show. We Our episodes go out every Wednesday. And we've had some cracking guests on lately. Um, so the, there's another show dropping tonight. Um, you yeah, find us every Wednesday. We're talking about, about obviously the rookies at the minute um, as we build up to the draft. Then we'll have some um, some mock drafts going in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. And yeah, go and check out the guys. As I said last week, we're, we're big supporters here at the World Guard and, and certainly Ali and the rest of the guys are, are putting out some fantastic content. Whilst you're here, if you're not already, make sure you're hitting that like button. Give us a thumbs up. And also make sure you're subscribing and tell a friend. Let's spread the word. Let's spread the wealth and uh, and bring people in. There's, there's going to be plenty more content coming as we get close to the draft and, uh, and approach that best season. We'll see you again soon.